Okay, so today we're studying 1.6, reasoning to solve problems. So we've talked about inductive reasoning, first few sections. We've talked about deductive reasoning and proofs and that sort of thing. And so 1.6 is using both types of reasoning to solve problems. Now we do this all the time without even really realizing it. Uh, but it, it's important for us to understand sort of how we think and, and it'll guide us into you know, how we explore you know, problems in the future. So I'm going to start with this explore here on the right side. And I want you to take a minute to think about this and to come up with a plan what you would do. Okay? And, and, and let's read through the explore problem. It says, suppose that you are lost in the woods for hours and you came upon a cabin. In the cabin, you find a lantern, a candle, a wood stove with wood in it, and a match. What do you light first, and why? And I also want you to think about, obviously, this situation, what you would do. So we're assuming you're cold, and you are allowed to use the contents in this cabin. Don't, don't say, oh, it's not mine, I'm going to stay out of it. I'm done. But think about what you would do in the cabin here given what you're given. And think about what type of reasoning you're using in, in doing this. Okay? So just um, on your own uh, or with a partner quietly, you can chat about it. What would you do in this situation? Take a minute to think about that. Okay, so I'll have a couple groups just share. Anybody want to share what their plan? Yep. Okay. Okay, so you would light the candle first because it's more likely to stay lit for a longer period of time than the wood. Okay? And how would you light the candle? Well, with the match. Oh, so you would actually light the match first. Oh, I thought that the Oh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, no, I'm just. I, that's why I asked you. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You. Okay, so you would light the match first then, and then the candle. And then you take the you take the candle and light the wood. Oh, okay, because the candle was stayed long. I, I get it, sorry. I just, I just had to ask where the match was coming in, so that's okay. I just wanted to know. Oh, it's common sense, okay. Okay, so there's a lesson in math. Show all your work. Make sure you don't leave any assumptions on the table if it's not written down. Okay, anybody else have a different plan? Was, was that a different plan than yours? Anybody want to share? Do you have another idea? I saw a few hands when Mackenzie was sharing. I saw a few hands. Were you guys going to say we like the can or the match first? Was that what you guys were going to say? Okay. Okay, so don't get after me. Everyone else is thinking it. Okay. All right, so I think that's great. <clears throat> I, think that's, I think that's great. You're, you're thinking. Uh, if you light the match and then try and light the wood stove uh, first, that match could go out and then you're hooped, right? Um, if you light the match, then the candle, you know that candle is probably going to burn for a long time, right? So use that to light the wood. So that's, that's very good. Now, what kind of reasoning was involved there? Were we able to identify what kind of reasoning was involved there? What did you, what was your thought process there? It's maybe a tougher question, but I asked you to think about that too. Does anyone have anything to say there? Any ideas there? Oh, no brave people on this one. Anybody? You looked at what you had, you, Coleman? Uh, they told me to do it. And deductive, because like in order to like anything, you have to like the match first. Okay, so deductive, uh, because in order to light anything, you have to light the match first. Like there's only one solid way starting to point. Yeah. There's only one solid starting point, and that's to light the match first. And then from there, you use that to decide how you're going to apply that. Okay, I, that's good. I like it. Anybody? have a different slant on that? Or anybody think about inductive reasoning? Would there be inductive reasoning involved here? In any way? Yes, I'm seeing some nods. Okay, do you care to share what you think? <laughs> yeah, right. I, I'm not saying anybody's right or wrong here. Uh, if you what, if you use inductive reasoning, now that remember that's observing different things and then coming to a, a conjecture about how things would happen. So if you looked at the match, the wood, the candle, uh, and this sort of thing, and you looked at those things and you tried to decide, you know, what you were going to do first, okay, 
one could argue that, hey, that's, that's inductive reasoning. I have decided that the match is going to go first because I cannot light the wood you know, just by rubbing my hands together over the wood. Or, you know, the candle, I can't just breathe on the candle and it will spontaneously, you know, light. So, you, you look at those, I mean, you could look at it that way too, okay? So, there, there is inductive and deductive reasoning all around. So, well, let's get to this investigate here, okay? Now, and, and I, there's, this is going to be a short lesson today. Emma was given this math trick, okay? And she was asked to use inductive reasoning to make a conjecture about the relationship between the starting and ending numbers and then use deductive reasoning to prove that her conjecture is always true. Okay, So you can use both types of reasoning to uh, come up with some kind of um, you know, idea about how this is true. One would be a conjecture that could be a pretty strong idea about what the, the relationship is, and the other would be more of a formal, here I'm proving it, right? So inductive, look at what she did for inductive. Inductive reasoning, she chose a number of different numbers and did the trick a number of times, right? Um, she probably chose numbers that were positive and negative and zero, small, large. So a good sampling, so if you're asked to do this inductively to test things out um, and try and look at the patterns, then uh, you know, you want to, don't, don't just pick one, two, three, you know, pick a zero, pick a negative number. You could pick a decimal too, I don't know, unless it says, you know, just, uh, it says choose any number. So, you know, do a spattering. Now, then she looked at the original number and the final product here, the final uh, result. And she noticed, what? That if you multiply the original number times three, that's what you get at the end, okay? So this is, again, inductive reasoning, okay? Little trials, look at the results, come up with a conclusion. The deductive reasoning part, okay? That's, again, remember the buzzword here is choose a variable. Try and use a variable in this um, algebraic expression and try and um, formulate your argument using a variable that could represent any number, not just the few that you've picked. And so she chose D and she did the multiplication, the addition, the dividing, and came up with this expression. Uh, and this is, uh, this is her deductive proof. And this, after simplification, simplifies to 3D, okay? Now, she is missing some steps here. If I ask you to prove, you're gonna have to show me more than this, um, right? Uh, so like we did in the previous section, start with D, right? Then show that becomes 6D, then add four, so 6D plus four, then 3D plus two, then 3D, right? So, so to strengthen that deductive argument there, that proof, you'd want to show all your steps. And then you would see that the original is D, the final simplification is 3D. This is a deductive uh, proof, okay? So these questions that would follow, um, uh, you know, we, we've kind of talked about this. But that's, in math, if you understand the difference here between inductive, you know, just trying examples, trying numbers, trial and error, you know, try it, see what happens, try and draw a conclusion from those examples, that's inductive. Deductive would be more of a formal proof. Okay, any questions about anything we've talked about here so far? Okay. All right. So again, there are there are a few um, there are a few examples. Uh, I, for the sake of this class here, I want you to work on things. I don't want to give too many examples because I mean it's it's a lot of logic. So. I'm just going to go straight to the in summary here, then I'm going to give you your assignment. So if we understand that both inductive and deductive reasoning are used to solve problems in math, that is important. The difference, what you need to understand, we've looked at each separately. Now the difference between them, inductive, solving simpler problems, observing patterns from those solutions, and then drawing a logical conclusion from the observations. That's inductive. Deductive involves using known facts or some basic, you know, true premise. You start from there and then you apply that. You draw a logical conclusion to solve littler problems. Okay, so that's, that's deductive. Okay, so that's just the lesson here, the activity in the lesson, and I'm going to give you your assignments and we might work through a few of those uh, questions.